Last picture. All right, so Jack's going to stick around. What's going on? Hey guys, let's, let's get the hands up there, please. Am I picking okay. people or you? No, I will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to have to do that. Hands up, let's go with Izzy. Hi, Jungle Boy, congratulations. Thank Such you. Now, during and leading up to the match, we saw that Genome Bucks and Red Dragon had kind of an alliance going on. Yeah. Was there a strategy put into place between you and Luchasaurus to break that alliance for this match? Um, there wasn't so much a strategy. I kind of figured just from the way things have been going that they wouldn't be able to make it through all the way. Uh, it's tough, though, because normally you're wrestling one team. These are two teams who are kind of connected to each other, but also two of the best tag teams in the entire world. Um, so in a way, I'm pretty thankful it didn't last because that, that was going to be pretty tough to uh, overcome. Yes. What was it like just being a part of that match with two other great tag teams like that? Yeah. And being able to come back and get the victory and all that. Uh, it feels really cool. They're just, you know, I've been a part of a bunch of matches I really like, but there are, when you're in there with guys like that, you just feel things at a different level. Um, and physically things are happening at a different level, but also then when you hear the crowd reacting, it's at a different level. And those are uh, two of the absolute best tag teams in the world. So to be in there and kind of just hang with them at every step of the way and then come out on top of it feels really cool. Good. Uh, you've had a wonderful run here, obviously, as tag champions with Luchasaurus, but it's obvious that you're very well beloved by the AEW fans. Uh, when this run does eventually come to an end, do you see yourself staying in the tag picture, or do you have your sights set on a uh, singles run? Um, hmm. I haven't thought about it too much. I guess, uh, I mean, I'd love to have a singles run at some point, but I feel very fortunate the whole time I've been in a tag team, I've been able to have some pretty big singles matches as well. Um, you know, I had one with Dax, that was one of my favorite matches of all time, one with Kenny, one with Adam Cole. Yeah. So, we'll see what happens. I really, there are so many talented people here, and just so many of the best wrestlers that you can find anywhere. I just kind of want to get in there with everyone, whether it's tag or singles or whatever it is. So I guess we'll see as it comes, you know. Okay, hold on a second. We're going to have the mics come now, so Leva and John, uh, Jim can give you the mics. So yes, Leva. Who's the, who's the question Next question? Yes, in the back. Hi, Jumbo. Mike Dagger with Lucha Libre Online. So I've seen that you guys have been for a couple of months now. You know, Christian Cage has been a big part of your success right now. How do you feel that Christian has been able to help you guys, you know, grow as a tag team? Not only as a tag team, but as wrestlers here in AEW. You know, I was saying earlier about the kind of levels uh, that there are to this. And Christian's obviously been doing this for so long and been very successful. And I think in kind of everything he does, whether it's his promos or his work in the ring, he has a level of polish that a lot of these guys don't have because he's been at it for so long. Um, so he's brought a lot of things to our attention, uh, a lot in the ring, things we never would have thought about really. And I think it's just, he's helped elevate us, obviously not to his level, but kind of bringing us up, showing us things we wouldn't have thought about without him. Thank you. Yes. <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jungle Boy. Spencer Valdez on SM today. Uh, AEW Revolution marks UCF's first pay-per-view ever. Um, right. Being that you are still in the tag picture, what does it mean to have been able to successfully defend the tag titles uh, on a first pay-per-view? Yeah, that's very cool. Um, we, we've had, what is this, our fourth defense, but this one definitely felt a lot bigger than the other ones, obviously. Um, the pay-per-views are always so special. I don't know what it is, but there's always just this crazy energy, and I think I can't think of a pay-per-view that hasn't knocked it out of the park. So to be a part of it in general just feels really cool. But then also to be a part of a first is always great. Um, but it's, I'd love to come back here. The energy was really cool. Awesome. Thank you. Over here, please. Jungle Boy, so my question for you is right now Tony Khan is bringing in a lot of new talent into AEW, a lot of young and hungry talent. You're seen as somebody that is supposed to be the future of AEW. So I got to ask you, does that add any pressure? How does that motivate you as somebody who's, you know, fighting for their spot? Um, I don't know. It, I mean, it's cool. I, I don't think about it too much because I kind of just try and focus on what I'm doing. Um, 
I, I think if they're bringing guys in who are exciting people and are going to have exciting matches, then I want to get in there with them. I feel pretty good about my spot overall. I feel good about having been here since the very beginning. Um, this is my first choice of where I wanted to go, so I'm, I'm glad to be here. And whoever it is, let's see, let's see what they're about. Great. In the back there. Jungle Boy, Righteous Reg of the Pro Wrestling Illustrated and Wrestling Podcast. Uh, the tag team division in AEW is probably the hottest it's ever been yeah. in history. There's multiple tag teams. You and uh, Luchasaurus, Private Party, Top Flight. What are you and Luchasaurus going to do to compete with the influx of tag teams and keep those tag team championships? Um, my thing, a lot. Of, uh, I I like to wrestle a yeah. lot, and a lot of guys come here, and I think. Not that it's a bad thing, but they're happy to do other stuff. They're happy to talk or do promos. I, I really want to wrestle, and I want to wrestle everybody that's here. Because as you said, there are so many teams. Um, and it's cool to have kind of like a never-ending supply of great athletes and performers. So I really would just like to wrestle as frequently as possible, defend these as many times as possible, give as many people chances as we can, and just kind of keep doing what we're doing. Hi, Samir from Wrestling News Co. Now you're talking about giving people chances. Is there anybody that you want to face in the ring then? Uh, as he mentioned, Top Flight. Those guys are pretty incredible. I love that match. Um, we've wrestled FTR in the past, and I learned a lot from those guys. Um, they're, they're very different uh, from us as wrestlers, but I think we picked up a lot of things from them and learned a lot. I feel like you learn more from the people who are different from you. So that's another thing I'd like to revisit at some point. Um, We've wrestled the Bucks a decent amount of times now, but it's always great with those guys, some of the best ever. So kind of, I feel like there are so many good teams here, you kind of can't go wrong with anybody. Hello, AJ from the AJ Awesome Show here. And I, there are some people that doubt you and your ability as the AEW Tag Team Champion. What can you say to those people? Uh, really all I can say is you get a watch. Uh, I found there are people who will kind of try and talk negatively no matter what you do, and some people are never going to be happy with it. It kind of is what it is, but I really enjoy what we're doing, and I, you know, I feel like when I listen to what's going on out there, the rest of the people really enjoy it. Um, so I try not to worry about it too much and just, you know, watch and see what we're doing. Uh, Jack John Aldo from Podcast T. Uh, this tag division is so stacked and we've seen on the timeline of this company just every single time the tag division elevates to another. So when you're in a situation like this where you have two other teams in there, how do you bring new ideas to the table for putting together matches like this? It's, uh, the third team is very interesting because it really changes a lot of the dynamics of what everything is. I feel like in a lot of tag matches, they're not the exact same, but there are structures and things that are very similar throughout them all. It kind of all goes out the window with this. And especially with a team that has such a, there's a lot there. You know, it's not just like three random teams. There's a lot to dig into kind of with their emotional story and all that. It, it was challenging, it was very challenging, but I think it was worth the time that it took us to uh, really put into this thing. Sean on staff of Fightful, uh, Tony Khan announced that he had purchased Ring of Honor this week. Yeah. What were your immediate reactions to that? I mean, you were coming up in wrestling at a time when Ring of Honor was really, really prominent. Yeah. My first, I kind of, I mean, it's exciting. There, there's crazy stuff happening now in wrestling that I think a couple years ago you would never have imagined. So I think it's really cool. Um, I think it's just going to provide new opportunities for people who maybe don't work here now and some people who do work here now. I guess I'm just excited kind of with everyone else to see what exactly that means. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think there's any way it could be a bad thing. I think it's very cool. Tony's making big moves. He's all about that. So he's continuing to push forward, and I think that's neat. A couple more questions. My, oh, can you? Um, Scott Fishman for TV Insider. Um, I'm just curious, how do you feel that you've grown as a performer in the last couple of years? Not only just because you have the end rank ability down and you, you seem to be growing it that way, but also as a kind of a character, if you'd say, building that side of yourself. Yeah. I, I think the main thing is I feel a lot more comfortable um, in the ring, just around here and other aspects of it than I did when I first got here. It's weird because obviously with the way things went, we went for a little bit and then we went for a year plus with nobody in the building. And that was like, that was really me kind of cutting my teeth in TV wrestling. I had more matches I feel like in front of nobody 
that I've had in front of full arenas. But I feel like during that time I got to grow a lot and work with new people like Christian and FTR and all these guys. So I, I feel good in there now. I, I get nervous every single time. I'm really bad about it. I'll be thrown up in trash cans and all that. Um, but when I'm out there, it just feels great. It's, it's the best thing in the world. Um, so yeah, I like to keep improving, uh, keep getting better at the things I'm not good at, and we'll see where it goes. One more. <clears throat> Uh, Jack, uh, AEW just announced that they are going to have shows in California. As a California person, Finally, dude. how does it feel? It feels great. I, to be there. I don't know, it was a year plus we'd have to fly to Jacksonville, Florida, which is like, <laughs> it's rough. Yeah. Uh, there are no direct flights. You have to connect. It's, I feel like being on that plane that long has done more damage to my body than any of this wrestling is ever going to do. So I'm very excited to be able to drive wherever we're going. And also, there's a huge wrestling fan base out there that we've been I've, waiting for you. I've been waiting. It's uh, the first double or nothing out there was crazy, but I'm very excited to get back there. Um, yeah, I think I think it's been really cool, and I hope it can be more regular than what it's been. At least not another three years. So. It'll be cool. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.